please leave a like and a comment on this video because it really helps me in the algorithm. Texas has some pretty spooky shit. Been here all my life. Back when I was a kiddo, my old man and I would hunt with my older brother and sister out in Kerrville. I remember our trailer would periodically smell like that rusty blood smell when we'd camp, but we always got used to it. There was some scary shit that went on out there. I distinctly remember when I was 11 and my dad shot a deer right behind the front shoulder but it boogied, so we had to go tracking. It was around mid-November, started to get dark real quick so I had my SKS, which I'd been killing deer on since I was 6, on me with a dull as fuck flashlight. My sister was back at camp cooking and reading, while we followed this blood trail. Being crafty, my dad put me in this valley where we found a pretty good pool of it, and I sat atop a boulder just to mark the spot, while he took my brother and put him further out past the tree line deep along the ravine. Where we were, there were tons of rocks all over the place, so I got up on that boulder and had a pretty good vantage, also had a decent clearing of about 50 to 75 yards around me. Well the night started to set, and the temp was around 50 or so, dropping into the 40s with me in the middle of this clearing with a light overcast and a full moon. I remember clicking the light off to save the battery and letting my eyes adjust to my surroundings, seeing the alternating pitch black to relatively moonlit valley in decent clarity. Just about 30 or 40 minutes after my brother and dad started tramping through the woods leaving me alone, I remember hearing some coyotes and seeing them on the outskirts of the clearing, not necessarily circling, though they paused for a bit to look and then continued on. I sat quietly on the boulder, watching nature go by, with the wind picking up slowly, giving a gentle strobing effect, with the cloud overcast just alternating with light and no light. I heard them yeep and howl a few minutes. And then they started to fade away. Minutes after that, I heard a resounding shot and report of impact, like a boom with a quick thud after it, meaning it was some distance between the two, and figured either they found the deer and put it down at range or somebody shot a coyote. Round that time I heard a scream which got me real worried, then just utter silence. The wind stopped howling, the squatty pine tree stopped rustling, I couldn't hear any of the yelping of coyotes in the distance, just dead silence. After a bit, I started hearing some light thuds on my right, like rocks banging together up a ways along the hillside. On the furthest distance, about 75 yards of the clearing, I saw a few rocks rolling down the side. Watching them when the first came into view bounce along, tumbling, then just listening as the clouds blacked out the clearing, and then watching them again come to a complete stop after a bit. Conventional thought snapped to me through the biting cold and I got real real low on the boulder, with the SKS ready in my hands aiming at the point of origin, just hearing my breathing contrast harshly against the mind-numbing quiet. A few more rocks did this from the same spot, and I saw a dark outline through the trees, not quite in the clearing but rather a few yards deep in the trees. I saw a pair of antlers when the light peeked back up, and when it went dark, I could hear some heavy breathing along the edge of the clearing. Me thinking it was the injured deer, keyed a little radio that we all had three times, to signal distress, so that my dad and brother would come back. I turned the volume real low and sat quietly on the rock, making sure not to silhouette myself as I peered into the darkness with my scope, trying to get a good picture. I remember seeing the outline, somewhat upright in the light, like it was a buck that stretched its neck out. It going dark, and then nothing. I panicked a bit despite being just 11, knowing the hooves of deer should clack pretty fucking loud out here if they moved at all, especially if it was that goddamn silent. So I sat and waited, not moving a muscle as that pool of blood next to me seemed to lazily waft itself into my nose. It wasn't particularly overpowering or anything, but it cut in pretty strong as I scanned again when the clouds cleared up for a few moments, looking for anywhere that thing could have gone. My radio keyed back twice, meaning somebody wanted to talk, and my stomach dropped. I keyed three times again and saw lights off over my left shoulder where my dad and brother went down to track after the buck, still a few hundred or so yards off in the distance. 
I sat there alone, jittering quietly in the cold in an absolute void with a lingering hope that my dad and brother would catch up. The light went out again, and I could hear those rocks rolling, just a bit from a spot just a little further up the hill and a few yards closer. The rocks rolled into vision when the cloud passed and when I looked up, I could see dark figure of antlers like 60 something yards away with a few trees in between. Knowing where my brother and dad were, leveled out the rifle and started to wait for a clear shot. It stepped out, and I was a hair away from the trigger falling when it went dark, so I waited patiently for the moon to come out again. When it did, whatever was out there disappeared completely, which didn't make much sense considering it was behind a few trees with some considerable openings to each side. I scanned again in the direction when the wind picked back up and the trees started to move with a hillside coming alive again. I heard the footsteps of my family behind me around 90 yards out and slowly crept off the boulder to go meet them, keeping that rifle close to me the whole entire time. When we met, my brother started giving me shit about how I was screaming and crying being all alone while he and my old man were tracking blood. Being the good brother that he is. When I told them I hadn't made a sound, they raised their brows and started claiming I was full of shit. I asked about the shot I heard and apparently it was a ways off in the next property over, since we were on the property line. They found a pretty good blood trail that left the origin of where I was in just about a straight line all the way to some crushed brush about 400 yards out, having the steer bleed profusely the whole entire time which was somewhat unreal. Then after the trail ended they moved around for a few thousand yards or so just to scan the area when they heard the shot and it sounded like it was over the low fence line. I told them about seeing what I could describe as a deer, but I didn't say much on the subject, except that it left without me getting a good look at it. We hiked it back up the hill in a staggered column with my brother picking up the rear with his lever action .243 and my dad leading with his 7mm rem mag, still scanning around as we made our way back to the truck. When we got there, my brother Cody and I hopped in the bed of the truck with him overlooking the cabin and me looking over the tailgate, and we started our way down a pretty long trail to the cap house. After a mile or so we had to take a detour through rough brush because a few trees collapsed on the trail, so we started going round through some clearings in the dodge. Just before we got back onto the trail, it got real tight with the trees, and we had to get out and walk in front of the truck to make sure it could fit. After getting everything cleared out and altering some limbs, we assumed the same spots on the truck and were just about to get back on the road when I spotted another pair of different antlers nestled in between the brush. At that moment I hollered to my dad, who, with his windows rolled down, took his 1911 out of the center console and blasted a buck between the eyes with a 230 grains HST, dropping it on the spot. Turns out that was the deer he was looking for but it ended up a few miles down the path with a hard shot, which is fucking impossible. It looked like it had a good gouge on it just a bit behind the point of impact on the ribs, like it had fallen on punji sticks or something. There was no blood trail near anywhere, no nothing, just that deer standing between two bushes by itself with a nice assortment of gouges in it. We loaded it up in the back of the truck and I sat on top of it with my SKS pointed at its head. For the rest of the night everything went according to plan, we skinned and quartered the deer up and iced the meat, but over the next 8 years or so my brother and I would still hear screams on our hunts at night when there shouldn't be people around for the next 10 or so miles. There were all kinds of burial grounds and shit on the land, we found piles of old arrowheads and Victorian era utensils in old burned down houses that had been there since the settlement of Texas. I told my sis about what had happened she being the oldest of the kids, and she joked about Native American mythology and the Wendigo in a natural teasing manner. I'm not so sure it's a joke out there. But yeah that's it. There were some other things but nothing got me like that night. I never had another horrid run-in like it, but there were instances on that land that'd creep me the fuck out. We'd find a old stone building with just piles of animal skulls stacked to the ceiling, filling the room up in there. There'd be all kinds of old, horribly rusted Civil War era rifles stuck in the mud or laying around in the stone buildings with broken receivers and other ailments. Lot of history up in there, 
used to be deep Comanche territory but I am not too sure they had something like the northern tribes as far as mythology goes.